All right, let's. Uh... Hey guys, what's up, and welcome to Young Titan World. Today, we're going to be reviewing Unicorn Worries Eternal. Unicorn Warriors Eternal is a collaboration between Adult Swim and Cartoon Network, both of which have very commendable TV series that we've all watched and we all loved, okay? Rick and Morty came from Adult Swim, Ed, Ed and Eddie came from Cartoon Network, so did Gumball and the amazing ventures that he had. So, you know, them pairing up to make a TV series is sure to be epic, right? Well, wrong. Well, technically not wrong. It's amazing, but it's got its own hitches and little bit of hiccups. Not to say that they're the worst in the world, but I personally enjoyed it, okay? So, the story is basically about, you know, warriors, duh. <laughs> And, uh, you know, one one's a gigantic robot, one's a very awesome sage who can see through the cosmic universe, one is an elf warrior who has a magic sword, and one is a witch born from the loins of Morgana and Merlin. So, yeah, they're very mortally crew, they're really powerful, and they save the day every time. Now, apparently, the evil that they're up against is one that is able to come back after being defeated. You know, you kill it, it comes back to life. You kill it, it comes back to life. You kill it, it comes back to life. So they they have to, like, constantly come back and save the day all the time. Now, to be fair, how this all starts is not at the beginning as I'm saying it, Okay. What we get to find out is way into the end. You know, the fact that Morgana and Merlin gave birth to the, you know, the dark witch who has black magic and everything. <laughs> you, you don't see that until you get to the end of it, which is a very long way away. And I, I don't exactly know why they decide to do that for every story nowadays. You know, they tell you, they leave you in the middle of it. And then when you're progressing, then they show you the beginning. I guess that's how every story looks cooler that way. I don't know. Anyways, so it starts off that. And um, so the process is they come together after every century because the giant, gigantic robot called Copernicus brings them back to life. He doesn't just bring them back to life, but he has to find their avatars, hosts, people who are willing to inhabit their souls. Now, willing is not in the picture. <laughs> They're not willing, okay? It's basically, if he finds you worthy, he's gonna shoot the unicorn preserved soul into your body, and then, boom, you're alive. And you no longer have control of whatever it is that you do because another soul is controlling your body and you're going to have to just be with them till the day they're done with their quest, which is awesome, I'm guessing. It's not much, give or take a couple of weeks, days, I don't know how long it is it took them to kill some of the um, greater evils, at least the same evil that keeps coming back. So, um, which each and every character that we have here, we have the gigantic robot, we've got the sage that's able to see through time and space, we've got the elven warrior, as well as Merlin himself, his daughter, and um, that's it, that's basically the entire crew. Now, they're facing off against one that is able to shape shift and has a power that is uncontrollable. Now, yes, it comes off, it starts off as Morgana, but we don't see that until a later date. But as we go through the entire animated series, we see that she presents herself in the form of the Nine Tails Fox. Now, given the fact that I'm an anime fan, the moment I see a fox with nine tails, I'm like, Q Beetle Chakra. Oh, I do know, like, or I go like, Kurama. Something like that. But, no, it's, Kumar, Kurama is not a good guy. At least, he's not in this one, and he's not pairing up with anyone to save the world, or to stop Madara. It's just, basically, to destroy the world and consume every sort of power that exists within it. Which seems a little bit complex, but... It's her MO, and that's what she keeps doing. But she also knows that she cannot win this war unless she gets these warriors out of the way. So what she does is that she tries to interfere 
with their reincarnation. Now, Copernicus is in charge of that, but before he's able to resurrect them, or he himself gets to boot up and start his mission, she decides to send robots after him to destroy him. But that's all successful, because my boy there, Copernicus, he's got some guns on him, like literal guns, cannons to be exact. So they try to kill him, it doesn't really work, he destroys all of them, and she realizes that, so she tries to see how exactly she can stop them. But it's very difficult. Now, what she decides to do is interfere with each and every one of them's incarnation, like reincarnation. And she starts off with her dearly beloved daughter. Because, you know, who else to destroy than a member of her family, one that just came out of her own body. So, it goes off like that. And um, when Copernicus finds a worthy host for uh, Morgana's daughter... What happens is quite interesting because the soul that is to be possessed is, or I mean, like the body that is supposed to be possessed, is that of a woman who is trying to live out her glory days. You know, she's got a childhood sweetheart, she intends to get married, she's at the altar getting ready to get hitched to the man of her dreams. And that's when Copernicus busts in into that wedding, decides that she's the perfect character, and decides to unibeam her. She does that, she is possessed, and now, you know, the soul of the daughter of Merlin and Morgana is now inside this married woman, or to be married woman. But there's conflict, you know. One wants to save the day, and one wants to live her dream days. You know, it's it's a conflict. So they're both tugging at the body, and it causes her to have no knowledge and knowledge about everything. You know, it's like they're two halves, but not exactly a whole, and each half is struggling for control. So basically, she's brainwashed, but she has knowledge of both sides of her life. You know, the one that has the, you know, super awesome day job of being reincarnated every century to save the world from an evil that is basically her mother, and the other who is you know, trying to live out her best life by marrying her childhood sweetheart. Now, all of this seems really impressive, but that's not all that's going on in this entire TV series, you know? We've got others, because not only are they shooting souls into people who are unwilling, but they're shooting it into other people's lives. One basic example is the sage. The sage has his soul transported into that of a kid, a delinquent, as a matter of fact, a black delinquent kid. It would seem odd, but it's not really odd, because bad kids, black kids, <laughs> that probably was racist, but do you see the skin on me? <laughs> I have the end card, but I don't usually say it. Or do I? I don't really say it. I think I do. Maybe I don't. Let's get back to the review. So what happens in this very glorious TV series is that everyone is trying to amalgamate and become more used to their new lives and stop the evil that is trying to destroy the world and absorb every energy possible or known to man. Um... Now, this is the part where things get a little dicey because the elf and Morgana's daughter they have a thing for each other, okay? They fell in love and decided to do the whole love each other whilst we're on the job killing the most powerful entity in the world. Well, technically not the most powerful. But if you were able to reincarnate yourself thousands and thousands of years later, I'm gonna have to call you a very powerful character. Because even with their reincarnation, they need some help from my boy Copernicus and the unicorn tablet that's inside him, or should I say circle, medallion, I don't know. There's just something inside him that has the crescent of a unicorn, or the symbol of a unicorn inside it, and that's what it does. It's magical stuff, and it brings everyone back to life. On to the review. Now, the characters with this are, they all have their own depths. They all have their own histories. The sage... Um, he knows everything, basically, past, present, future. He experienced it all at once, and he's also witnessing a different world as he moves around. His eyes constantly glow, orangey, uh, because he's always perceiving into a different dimension. He knows what will happen, when it will happen, and how it will happen. The thing is, 
it might be a little bit inconsistent when it comes to the storytelling. I wouldn't say that it's beyond any studio to be like that because, you know, I guess inconsistencies are supposed to happen so that the movie or the animated series can happen. So what happens is that his soul is given into a black boy delinquent. Yes, I said black boy, sue me. Um, the character understands his power, but he's not alone. He's also learning that He's also learning the knowledge of the one that came before him, which is quite impressive. Um, but however, he's still growing and he's still a child and it's a lot more to consider when you're targeting what these characters represent. Um, I would say everyone doesn't do well with humor, especially with the black girl who is always serious all the time. She's like a goth chick who, you know, the elf guy understands and is trying to comfort her in his own way. But after the merge between the soon-to-be-married and the darkness daughter of Morgana and Merlin, it becomes really difficult. And he's not really able to vibe with her because of the conflict that is already happening inside her mind. Now, you could call this a great way for them to introduce a new love interest, and bingo, you got it. Because the dude that was supposed to marry, though, you know, the, the girl who had childhood sweetheart um, fever, that guy is also pretty much obsessed with this girl. So, as this happens, and they're trying to fight off the evil and trying to figure out what to do with their brainwashed um, compatriot, he's trying to chase after her to get her to come back so that they can finish their lovely little weapon and live happily ever after. So far, so good, right? But not so far so good, because as they encounter this evil, it decides to introduce new threats that decide to destroy the world. Um, the girl is absolutely very powerful, because in one such case, she's able to summon a whole ass kaiju. Not really a kaiju, but if I was supposed to compare the gigantic sea monster that is the terror of the entire Skull, and Skull Island animated series, and that of... The Unicorn Warriors Eternal Gigantic Kaiju, I, I consider that one over the other one, I'm just saying, because its outlook looks cool, even though it has a thousand eyes, a lot of eyes. This, we're, we're totally killing this review, aren't we? No matter, let's bring this to a close. So, um, what we're looking for, uh, or what we see throughout this entire, um, animated series is confusing. Each one of the characters is trying to grow into and absorb what they are, all except the elf. Now, the elf has to confront his past. His past was that he was supposed to be a prince, you know, a prince that takes care of his kingdom. Now, obviously, he thought that the best way he could do it is if he was out there stopping an evil that could consume the whole world and destroy everything that was. But he still had duties. They had something called the unbroken line for him, and basically, he was supposed to live a life that always brought the elves safe, you know. His lineage was in charge of keeping the forest safe, as well as every living thing that was there. Now, since it was under threat from the Morgana lady, who transformed into a lot of things in green flames, it became a problem, so he thought that his best possible way to save the world is if he joined these band of merry people and do it. I don't know if he was actually trying to get with um, Merlin's daughter, but in the beginning, it seemed like he was chivalrous, and she was being a bitch to him, so <laughs> it kind of didn't seem like that was his main motivation for joining the club. But, um... I think we also get to see him confront his past, because after he leaves, he doesn't look back. But what happens to his kingdom is terrible. Everything goes into darkness, and now there is a power struggle between the entities that already exist within that forest realm. And it's another band of elves, and what they intend to do is they intend to take absolute power and control of the entire place. And uh, once he comes back, he finds out about it, he decides to stop them. Um, Twillian, his trusted sword, is also, you know, the power is stripped off it, but he's able to use it nonetheless. However, that's only temporarily to make us value how much power Twillian has, I don't know. But yeah, they really round things off in a really cool way, and they get his powers back, and everything is just, you know, they, they sum everything up 
beautifully, beautifully, absolutely wonderful, fantastic, amazing. Oh, um, I think I'm running my mouth a little bit too much, so let me just take a deep breath. Um, so, endgame. Endgame is really simple. We have the characters realize that um, the Elf Kingdom needs him. They need him to come back and rule the nation, so it's very difficult for them to decide. But it's not really. They have a hilt, a way to keep the eyes on the prince, keep it still staring at him, keep him in the kingdom, and solve the entire problem. And what do they decide to do? Well, I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I think the moral ethics behind it could be argued as a little bit dark. Okay, so they're... <laughs> Their solution is to take his soul, or at least the soul of the prince, take the soul of the prince, put it in another body, all right, and take the soul of his brother and put it inside, put it inside his body so that they can, so that the entire world would think, hey, it's the prince, he has returned. To keep chaos from reigning. It's a really cool concept, but I'm sure that either Voldemort would disapprove. He he disapprove. <laughs> they would have a really long chat about how that's messed up. Um, but yeah, that's what happens. Uh, that's basically to the extent because that's where I got lost, and I thought that there was nothing that couldn't be done in this TV series that could affect my state of mind. Um, but it ends there, and I would like to go on more, but um, I believe this is only season one. Um, season nine just came out, and I believe in that particular episode, um, the conflict that exists between Morgana and Morgana's daughter and that of the to-be-married woman, it, they're separated from the body, and it's kind of like... Without the body, Morgana's daughter cannot really do anything. She needs the body in order to exist in this realm, else she would go back into the medallion that's with, that's inside Copernicus. So, yeah, there's a really chaotic scene going on, and they're trying to fight the evil, because the evil has now gone into the cosmic realm. And it's really crazy. It's it's wild, but what are you going to do about it? You know, they right they're really trying to get our hopes really shaken because right now we've got um we've got the sage grown up in his black body, he looks really awesome. He's got a white tiger now, white lion, and they, they also recruited a tiger and the guy who was chasing after his married uh the that the guy chasing after his childhood sweetheart is now a werewolf. So that's cool. I don't know if they're going to make it like all the short TV series that exist now, where your longest um season would probably be 10 episodes. I don't know. Maybe they'll end it at 10. Maybe they'll go beyond 10. Who knows? We can't say. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> but we're waiting to see what happens with Unicorn's War is Eternal. Uh, but ideally, I did really enjoy the TV series. It was really fun. Um, getting to meet characters that are not always trying to make us laugh, have their own stakes, and are pretty much vested in what they do. Um, I think it's a real good step up from what Cartoon Network has been doing lately. It's a real good change of pace because I don't, I hate the ridiculous, always trying to find the funny and everything. It, it kind of drains the essence out of a TV series or an animated movie. Whatever it is, I really do enjoy it, and I hope they 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 consistently keep up with this type of um design or drama sequence. So I, I really loved it. I'd give it a seven out of ten, um, just because of how it is. But we get to see what happens. Maybe we'll enjoy it a little more. Maybe we won't. How are we going to know? We're not going to know. We're going to have to find out in the next one. So I would appreciate it if you guys could like and subscribe for more because i'll basically be doing this for quite a while if it's not your deal well 
I mean, I can't force you to stay. Just hit that like button and never show your face here again. Does that sound good? Oh, that sounded really rude. That was pleasantly rude. Sorry. I don't know. I just get in my own way when I'm making these episodes. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, but thanks so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. You guys have a great day. This is Young Titan. Yeah. Young Titan out. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs>